Hello folks. Well, the weather is quite nasty here now, so I decided to do a quick build of a model that I built many years ago that were 0.40, that's 40 nitro sized. Here you can see my friends and I in my club with ours. Now back in the 80s they were sold as a kit called a round to it. I built several sizes, even an 049 Cox Mini. And about eight years ago I built an actual smaller one that actually burned up in the fire, so I decided to build another one today as they were always really great flyers, pretty tough and controversial and fun to fly. I completely built this one today in four hours thanks to Satellite City's Industrial Super Glue and NCF Quick Accelerator. It actually would have been done in much less time if I didn't add the lights or took all the pictures, but it's really easy, so here's how I did it. Well, the items that you're going to need is a piece of dollar store foam board, super glue that is foam safe, like the Satellite City Special T and the NCF Quick Accelerator, some blend derm tape for the hinges, two control horns and rods for the elevons, a 3 inch by 1 inch by 1 8 inch piece of plywood for the motor mount, a 1 half by 1 half inch by 2 inch piece of hardwood to brace up the motor mount on the bottom, and a pool noodle. You'll also need a 1534 kV motor, but to run the lights and the radio, you're going to need a 1500 milliamp 11.1 .1 LiPo, a micro receiver, and two 9G servos. I'll talk about the radio you're going to need in a minute, but first let's build the plane. First, you want to find the center, both lengthwise and widthwise, of the foam board. Then with the string tied to a pencil, hold the string at that center point mark you made and draw a circle on the board by keeping the string tight. Then you want to carefully cut out the circle with the hobby knife. Then draw a line 14 inches across at the rear and center to cut out the elevons. Then cut a 3 inch by 1 8 inch slot at the nose to glue the motor mount into. Well, then I used a sanding block to sand all the edges to make them smooth. Well, then, using the blend derm tape, put your elevons on. Make sure to leave a bit of a space about a sixteenth of an inch between the body and the elevons because they want to be able to move up and down freely. Then stretch the rest of the blend derm to go around the entire outside of the circle to seal and protect it. Well then, using a piece of the foam board that's left over, fashion a vertical stabilizer making sure it's at least five inches high. Mine is also eight inches long as shown. Next, cut two slots in the elevons and using the special T CA, glue in the control horns and install two control rods. Make sure if you use screw-on connectors like these, you put Loctite on the knurled nuts. I'll tell you why in a moment. Next, CA glue on the vertical stab. Make sure to use a T-square to make sure it is vertical and then spray the quick on it to make the glue dry. I know some of you are probably going to ask me about the special T and the hot stuff, uh, thin stuff for the super glue from Satellite City and using it on foam. So I'm just going to show you, first of all, I'm going to take the special T, this is the thick stuff, and I'm going to put a drop of it right here. This is the noodle. And I'm going to put some on this right here. And I'm going to put some on this is the foam board that I built this UFO from. Okay. Now, I'm also going to take the thin stuff. This is the hot stuff. This is the very thin stuff. Very, very strong. And I'm going to put that on here, too. And you see that runs all the way along here. I'm going to put some of that here. And I'm going to put some of that here. And just to show you that it is not melting or eating into the foam whatsoever. Okay, I'm going to spray this with the quick can see that thing hitting off there that's the hot stuff that's why they call it hot stuff now look at this perfect all of this is hard it did not eat the foam so that's why I'm not afraid to use it on this airplane so this is really great stuff this was the very first super glue ever introduced to model airplane guys 
And this all happened back in the 70s, and I know because I'm an old guy. <laughs> Next, mount the motor mount to the front of the plane in the slot you cut using the special TCA. I already had the motor mounted on there, so that made it pretty easy. Then on the bottom, put the small wood block on with the CA so to brace it firmly. Then you want to cut two slots as shown to mount the battery strap. Okay, the radio equipment, motor, and lights were salvaged from the flying wing that Jason Ubery gave me when he was here. It said they came to its demise when one of the knurled nuts that hold the push rod to the control horn unscrewed in flight and came undone, causing a horrible crash. I was sick to lose this plane. But obviously it will not fly with one elevator and I had no choice. Well, that's why I suggest putting Loctite on as I did on this installation. Sorry it crashed, Jason, but at least the radio equipment lives on, and I thank you for that. Next, put the control rods on the Hextronic 9G servos and glue them to the side of the rudder and the bottom to the wing, making sure the elevons are slightly up and even as shown. I used the special T for this too, as I do not ever intend to remove them. Right behind the motor mount goes the battery. Put it as far forward as you can. I strapped it on with the battery Velcro strap. To the rear of that I velcroed on the 20 amp speed controller and right behind that I mounted the Spectrum AR61 receiver. Once that was mounted I cut the noodle to fit over the electronics and actually can use that as a handle to launch. On the bottom I added a half the noodle to the center and also to the wingtips to use as landing skids. So it's now complete and ready to fly. As a bonus I add the lights. <laughs> I'm the night flyer right? So knowing what I know about light flying, I had to add lights to the top and bottom of the wing so you can see it in the turns as the side lights disappear in a turn. I also added white lights to the vertical stab so I can tell where the rear is. So now, let's see if it flies. Well, did you ever try to fly a frisbee and win this strong? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well in this high wind it's like trying to fly a garbage can lid and it's a little pitchy. On a fairly calm day though it's a lot easier. Hopefully the wind will go down for this night flight. Here we go.
Oh, my hands are absolutely frozen. Absolutely frozen. Well, thanks a lot for watching, folks, and Happy New Year. This is the Night Flyer. We'll see you next year.